Welcome to a Soldier's Note channel. Before continuing to watch this video, don't forget to press the subscribe button, activate notifications, like, and share with your friends. Thank you. Seen a signal. One, stand by. Aim 260 missile the U.S. Air Force and beyond visual range lethality. Box uh, box times one. Box box times two. Craig, go out. The U.S. Air Force's AIM-260 missile now in development offers marked improvements over the AIM-120, but, as Douglas Berry explores, questions remain as to its end-game performance at extended ranges. The United States military, and the U.S. Air Force USAF, in particular, invests in and places considerable store by superior technology to prevail against peer rivals. The USAF is also disinclined to allow its near allies to field capabilities it does not also have access to. In the Air Force's slipstream, US industry is often first to market with advanced systems. This makes the USAF's apparent approach to its next generation of beyond visual range air-to-air -air missiles AAMs all the more intriguing. AIM-260 Missile In 2022, the Air Force is planning to begin to field the Lockheed Martin AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile JATM, as a replacement for the Raytheon AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile AMRAM. For almost 30 years the latter has been the Western benchmark for active radar-guided missile performance. The AIM-260 is the USAF's priority AAM development, prompted at least in part by China's increasingly capable AAM inventory. The People's Liberation Army Air Force's latest AAM to enter service, the Place 15, joined the inventory in 2018 and has a greater range than the AIM-120 family. The AIM-260 undoubtedly offers marked improvements over the AIM-120, including in overall range. There remain questions, however, as to its maximum fly-out range and its end-game performance at extended ranges. The missile designer may have come up with a novel propulsion approach for the AIM-260 to address this, or perhaps there is an unseen development intended to provide a much longer-range engagement weapon. The USAF alternatively could rely on the tactical advantage of low observable launch platforms, such as the F-22 and to a lesser extent the F-35, combined with the AIM-260's performance to defeat aircraft with notionally longer-range missiles. Such an approach, however, will not work with the USAF's legacy fourth-generation fighters such as the F-15 and F-16. Ramjet Propulsion The AIM-120 was replaced as the radar-guided AAM performance yardstick with the introduction into service in 2016 of the European Meteor Extended Range AAM, developed by MBDA. The Meteor has a greater range, and more importantly, the missile remains powered during the final stage of a medium to long-range engagement. This is because the AIM-120 is powered by a solid rocket, while the Meteor uses a ramjet sustainer engine. While the AMROM has a greater peak velocity, the result of rapid acceleration likely to be more than Mach 4, the solid propellant burns out comparatively quickly even with a boost sustained motor configuration when compared to a ramjet. The Meteor's ramjet is thought to have fuel to operate for at least 60 seconds and a faster average speed. All other things being equal, this gives the ramjet sustainer missile a far greater no escape zone than a traditional solid propellant missile. The no escape zone is the volume of space in the front quadrant of the launch aircraft within which the target aircraft can be engaged irrespective of any evasive maneuver it might execute. The Meteor is described as having an operational range greater than 100 km, and a 60 km no escape zone. Alongside electronic countermeasures, defensive tactics include attempting to outrun and outmaneuver the incoming missile by bleeding off its energy. 
In the case of a traditional solid propellant missile, at the medium range it is already coasting. The more it has to maneuver, the more energy it loses. Despite almost 40 years of admittedly sometimes sporadic research and development into AAM ramjet propulsion, the USAF has not opted for this with the AIM-260. While the Air Force has not provided any detail of the propulsion for the AIM-260, it has said it does not use a ramjet. Air Force Brigadier General Anthony Genetempo, the USAF Program Executive Officer for Weapons, has also previously told journalists that the missile does not use a ramjet. He also indicated the weapon would be no larger than the AIM-120. Lockheed Martin may have adopted some form of boost coast boost configuration for the AIM-260 motor, possibly with a higher energy propellant than previous generations of solid motors. Even so, it remains questionable whether this would provide similar overall performance to a Meteor-class missile. If it does, then the US has so far kept this propulsion development under wraps. If it does not, then the question that arises is whether the US has additional, as yet classified, long-range AAM technology in the works. This analysis originally featured on the IISS Military Balance Plus, the online database that provides indispensable information and analysis for users in government, the armed forces, the private sector, academia, the media and more. Customize, view, compare and download data instantly, anywhere, anytime. The Military Balance Plus includes data on air-to-air -air missile holdings by type in armed forces worldwide. The AIM-260 itself will very likely feature advanced two-way data links in order to send and receive new information, allowing for more precise targeting, complete retasking of the missile in flight, and engaging targets based on data from off-board sources. The latter functionality would allow a fighter pilot to engage targets beyond the range the sensors on their own aircraft or fire the missile without having to activate their own radar, increasing the likelihood that enemy forces would detect them. The AIM-120D already has a two-way data link that has some third-party targeting capabilities. But keeping the weapon within the same size constraints of the AMROM will be especially important in order to integrate it into existing stealth fighters, such as the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, which must carry their weapons internally in order to maximize their stealthy characteristics. The F-22 and the non-stealthy F-A-18E-F Super Hornet are slated to be the first aircraft to carry the JATM, which Genetempo said is expected to begin flight testing in 2021 and begin initial operational testing the year afterwards. After that, integration on F-35 variants will occur, according to Air Force magazine. It seems likely given this time frame that the missile could find its way onto other Air Force fighter jets, including the service's future F-15X Advanced Eagles. As I bring up JATM production, AMROM production is kind of going to start tailing off, Brigadier General Anthony Genetempo added. There is also no explanation for why the new missile is called the AIM-260. The Joint Service Designation System for Missiles involves a three-letter prefix, in this, AIM, for, Air Intercept Missile, followed by an arbitrary number that is supposed to follow in sequence. The designation sequence has only recently hit the 180s, at least publicly, and it is highly unlikely that it has jumped so far ahead on still classified projects alone. As such, 260, appears to be a deliberate choice with a specific meaning. It could be a reflection in some way of the missile's performance or a completely different reference, similar to the out-of-sequence designation for the B-21 Raider stealth bomber. The Air Force chose that nomenclature because the plane would be the first bomber for the 21st century. Regardless of what the designation means, a new air-to-air -air missile with a significantly greater range over the AIM-120D, as well as other improvements, will be a boon to both stealthy non-stealthy US fighter jets. Improved networking capabilities down the road could allow non-stealthy aircraft, such as the Super Hornet, to act as missile trucks and engage targets beyond the range of their own radars and other sensors while also keeping as far away as possible for enemy aircraft and air defenses. It is also worth noting that the AIM-260 appears to be just one part of a future family of advanced air-to-air -air weapons. The JATM program is separate from the Long Range Engagement Weapon LREW project. You can find the War Zones analysis of the LREW missile, which Raytheon is developing.
Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave your comments. See you in the next video.